yeah, I'm quite, quite the passionate person. Um, I, can, I can see that, Carla. I, 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 um, yeah. I, I, I <laughs> so just... In case you haven't noticed. <laughs> Siren's busy driving. Guess I'll make my move. Crazy feet on Robbie Lee. Ladies and gentlemen, today we are with the marinara eating Italian stallion, Carla Triano. We're in business. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really nervous. These no, things freak me out. No, don't be nervous. So, but are you? Are your both your parents Italian? Both of them are Italian. Yeah. Background. Okay. But I'm second generation, so they were both born here. Ah, oh, right. Okay. Yeah, so I'm, yeah, so, but, yeah, so both mum and dad are Italian, but your, your surname's Italian. My name, yeah, my surname is Italian, but my uh, mother was from Malta. Ah, but so was your dad Italian? Yeah, he's got Italian, yeah, he was from Sicily. Well, his grandfather was from Sicily. Okay, right. Yeah. So, so do you can, speak any Italian? No, I used to when I was a child. Yeah. Uh, but not, you know, I was very fluent in Italian when I was a child. But yeah. uh, growing up, uh, you know, it was very difficult to communicate with kids, especially coming off the uh, Achille Lora, which is an Italian cruise ship, which I lived on when I was uh, wow. up, up until I was about four years of age. Wow. And uh, yeah, I, I don't speak fluent, but I can understand a bit. And I'm actually learning Italian at the moment. Oh, so. yeah. Where are you learning it? Just online, um, with like 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 a Zoom call like this. Oh right, um, okay. With with a tutor, so yeah. I do it with her weekly. And do you yeah. put do you put stickers around the house to remind you what it means? Um, and how I've got to an app. You got an app. So I I do yeah. I've got a little app, and then she gives me homework. I feel like I'm five years old again. It's hilarious. I literally feel like I'm in high school. Um, but it's good. Like it's passing the time, so that's good. Yeah, but you, you would already have a basic understanding of Italian, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, I do. I, I studied in Milan when I was uh, 16 and I've been to Italy a few times. Um, but my parents have kind of always spoken to me in English. My yeah. grandparents spoke to me more in Italian. And uh, unfortunately, I've only got one of them left. She's 95, so she's quite the warrior. Um, and she lives in Melbourne. And th- in Melbourne, yeah. Yeah, right. So Where- she's she's just adorable. Um, and she's ninety five, and she still uh, lives on her own. She can do her own, you know, washing and and things like that. She's a little she's a little slow, and she's got hearing aids, but she's doing well given the current situation. Um, you know, my mum's going over there to sort of care for her as much as possible yeah, but we're sure. sort of wrapping her in cotton wool at the moment um and where does she live but i think she lives in richmond okay so so she's so she's not too far from me so if she needs anything i sort of drop in i wanted to go and do a little bit of a concert outside her window but i was okay. like i'm probably going to get fined if i do that <laughs> yeah. so I like, you know i think the biggest thing is because you know, like us, we all have, um, you know, technology and, and video calls and FaceTime and all of these apps, house party and all these things where you sort of, you know, can feel a bit connected where she doesn't have any of that stuff. She's 95. You know, she's not going to turn on an iPad and start using Zoom, you know, or a laptop. Yeah, so no chance. Sort of like, you know, she's got the landline, so we call her as much as possible. And, um, you know, she's in good spirits, which is pretty good. But uh, with the whole Italian thing I mean three of my grandparents have passed away now and they were always wanting me to sing in Italian um which I've started doing in the past year um which has been great and I think it's just you know and I I wish that they were around you know to see that and um I did a big Australia Day kind of multicultural festival um this year and sang in Italian and my mum was there filming it and then sent, you know, showed my, my nonna and she just was like so proud and bawled her eyes out. So it's sort of like one of those things that that's been one of the big things for me. I'm like, I want to be able to speak fluently yeah. or speak enough um, to be able to sing um, yeah. more in Italian. I mean, you don't necessarily need to be able to speak a language to sing in it, but I think that, I mean, definitely helps. So it's good. So you, you stem from 
uh, Milan. Is that correct? Is that where your parents from? No. So I studied. I studied in Milan when I was younger. Um, but my I, I'm I'm a southerner. Um, my dad is from Naples, and my mum's from Abruzzo, which is probably, oh, okay. which is, you know, sort of in the middle yeah. of uh, of I, Italy. I, I but, frequent. Um, I frequent. The I mean, Neapolitan. Yeah, Neapolitans are very famous for being singers and musicians. So it's quite like a lot of people sort of have that kind of like, you know, where did you get the singing from? Where did you get the music from? Um, And it's really weird because I think that it's just been in my blood forever. Yeah. Um, You know, most most people in my family can sing or play an instrument. Um, Neapolitan, I mean, I've got Neapolitan blood, so... You know, and Italians are pretty loud. So people are like, the people are like, how are you five feet tall and have this massive voice? I was like, I was like, I've been in training since I was like born. Like, <laughs> that's, just how, that's how Italians like speak and, and are, you know, we're, we're pretty loud people. So yeah. Yeah. And so most of us are musicians. So, so yeah. did you grow up, did you grow up in the northern suburbs or? I grew up in the east. The east, uh, okay. Around Don- like I grew up in Doncaster. Right. Um, so I, be- I was there most of my life and, um, yeah, now I live south side. I've always yeah. loved the south. Yeah, really? Um, okay. Which is weird because, uh, you know, there's always that north-south kind of like crossing the river vibe. But I was actually conceived in St Kilda. So my parents owned an apartment in... Uh, in St Kilda, I guess, before it was cool, yeah. um, you know, a long time ago. And um, were they actually, it was actually right near the ESPY um, yeah, right. on the Esplanade. And my mum used to tell me that, you know, it wasn't trendy and, and, and fashionable with, like, you know, nice bars and live music around. Yeah. She's like, it was kind of full of dere- derelicts and drug addicts. I mean, you know, I mean, <laughs> St Kilda has its charm with those kinds of um, people, but yeah, so I think that's probably why I've always been, I, I sort of been drawn to the South and I quite like the beach. So I like, the, I like the South. Um, that's as far as yeah. I go with liking the South is St Kilda. Alwood is probably my threshold. Anything past Alwood, I'm just like, I don't know. Not into bit, it? No, I'm not into it, man. It's too, <laughs> it's too weird. Are I don't you know. a Northeast? Are you, where, are you, where do you I'm, live? I'm a nor- Northern suburbs person, but I grew up in the Western suburbs. Ah, Okay. You know, right? Up, See, I, there's always I, this rivalry. Yeah, but I, I, I grew up where you know, if you came from the south or the east or the north, or the north have has has similarities to people in the west, but the east and south are very. You can see the cult, cultural uh, cringe, you know, going over, <laughs> go over going I'm over sure. to the west. You know, people you never used to want to come to the west for a number of reasons. Oh, now now it's very trendy. Well, it depends on I where mean, you all, go. Like, I mean, everybody, you, everybody. If you, you know. go to Williamstown, it's okay. You yeah. Know, but uh, What about you know, Yarraville and stuff? Yeah, Yarraville's come up. I mean, but in the day when I was growing up, you know, uh, it was like, you know, those Western, you know, the, the Western films from the Spaghetti Westerns films from the mm-hmm. early 70s? Yarraville was like that. It was like rolling uh, hay down the street. And uh, you'd walk down there, and I tell you, there'd be people out there ready to kill you. You know, especially those Greek oh, guys that used to hang out. You know, the but, Sun Theater. <laughs> you, you know, the Sun Theater that used to be a Greek theater back in the eighties, right? right? And it was derelict. Right. It was derelict, and uh, it was uh, really scary to go around there. And yeah, my, right. my, my older sister used to work there in the mid seventies as a uh, pharmacist. Uh, you know, assistant. Right when she was 18 and uh and I was only a kid and she this guy from Yarraville wanted to date date her and she she he did he was successful and I got all my mates from primary school and we stayed at the front of my place and uh barricaded barricaded the uh, front of the gate so he couldn't get in (laughs) you know there was no way he was going to get to my sister man that's all, and, and then that's, that, that, and, that's, and, that, that's a very Italian thing to do to their sister. <laughs> I reckon my I reckon my brother would probably do do the same thing. But did he? Hundred percent. Did he do the same? Oh, he's he's. Oh yeah, he's. I mean, he's younger than me, but he's definitely um, jealous, pro- like protective. Protective, yeah. Very, yeah. Very protective, yeah. Um, and I think it's a, that. I mean, it's really interesting. Like that's a real cultural thing. I mean, even my 
my male friends who are, you know, very, very good friends of mine um, are the same, you know, um, particularly the Italian ones. <laughs> They're very, very protective. So I think it's a cultural thing. I don't know. It's, I mean, but I'm, having said that, you know, I'm, I'm quite similar as a person. Um, I think anyone who kind of knows me, like I'm, I'm all heart and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm all heart until somebody pisses me off, <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, and particularly with people that I care about, like I'm, I'm usually the one who would definitely go into battle, go into battle for someone yeah, right. and, um, you know, stand up for someone and stand up for people who don't necessarily have the confidence or the skill set to stand up for themselves. Like I'm, I'm definitely that kind of person. So I'm, I'm fiercely protective over people that I love. So I think, I think that that's a real Italian thing too, like that I would probably have, you know, like I hold, I hold people in my life who are close to me in really, really high regard. Um, and I guess when, when, you know, when people are sort of someone hurts that person, I'm, I'm quite passionate you know, and it comes from a place of love. I mean, um, you know, I'm certainly not going to go and, and, and fight anyone with these nails, but I, it's just it's more, more a heart thing, I think. So I, I, it's, it's sort of, yeah, I'm qu- qu- quite the passionate person. Um, I, can, I can see that, Carla. I, I, um, yeah. well, I, I, <laughs> like I just... In case you haven't noticed. <laughs> um, I want to take you back to Na- Naples for a moment because... Uh, when I was a kid, that that ship that I was on called the Achille Lauder, that used to yeah. that used to port in Naples. So right. I, I I I lived in Naples as a child. Wow! For a number can you of, understand the Neapolitan dialect? That's very hard. When my family I mean, speak you, the dialect, you, I'm like, what are you, you saying? Yeah, I mean, it's a um, weird, it's a, I mean, I, I can understand. Believe it or not, I get more of the Sicilian type of. Um, uh, the dialect, the, dialect. The, the, the yeah, you know, right. I but, was supposed but, to be in Sicily this year, actually. Oh, really? I was, yeah, I was supposed to be visiting. It's, it's. I've never been there. It was a dream of mine to go, but you, no you, one's you, going anywhere for a while. <laughs> so I'll have to just keep looking at it on the internet until I can go again. Why were you going to Sicily? My brother was getting married in, in Greece, actually, in September. Um, his fiance is Greek. Um, and, yeah, so we were supposed to be going over for a wedding and we were going to make a holiday out of it, like, you know, some of the family, and then yeah. I was going to kind of do a little bit of travelling. Um, and, you know, I've got friends in London yeah. um, that I was going to go and see because um, I haven't been to the UK for a while. And um, you know, such is life. Yeah, that's not a, that's not a thing. But I, you know, hopefully it will be again soon. So when you went to uh, England, yeah. what were you performing there? Or oh no, I I mean I was supposed to move. I was supposed to move to London in 2011, um, and had my visa organised, and you know I had a good friend over there at the time who was going to help me look for some work. And I was sort of adamant that I was going to go there and, um, you know, pursue this extravagant, amazing singing career. And then I fell in love and I didn't go. Um, and I don't regret that at all. Um, him and I are, you know, no longer together. But he was he was great at the time. He was like, you know, go, um, we'll make it work. Do you, you need to do what you need to do. This is your dream. And then I went over there um, for about seven weeks to have a holiday sort of beforehand and sort of get things organised and basically got on a plane and came back because I was like, I can't do this. So um, and I definitely don't regret it because I think um, had I not done that, I wouldn't have established a career in Melbourne. Um, because I think that was that was very much the beginning. I mean, I haven't really been doing this that long, actually, compared to a lot of a lot of people in, in the industry and a lot of people, you know, around. I, I I would probably consider myself quite new compared to most people. So I think at that stage, I you know sort of came back and then made the decision that you know I was going to start 
doing more music here. I mean, and I'd always done music, but I sort of was always too, I guess, um, insecure or too anxious to kind of pursue it on a professional level. So then after that, after I decided not to move to London, I was like, well, I have to uh, dig my heels in now. Now, now it's time to get it done. So where, where were you yeah, living in? Kind of where were you living in London? Oh, well, I wasn't really or? living there. I was sort of just visiting. I visited a couple of times. I was living in East London. Yeah. Um, I sort of stayed with a friend of mine who was living in Mile End, which was kind of a bit grungy and very cool, kind yeah. of like Fitzroy vibe. Um, and I, I quite liked it there. Um, but what I think I just, I mean, I, I didn't really establish a, pra- a place of residence at that stage because I was sort of going to stay with her for a while and then figure out my next move from there. But I sort of never ended up happening. I just kind of cut my holiday short and turned all my luggage around and all my belongings and came back. <laughs> so yeah, that, that happens. You know, people, people do things for love. So yeah. it was, you know, quite, quite the grand gesture. But um, to this day I still don't, still don't regret it at all. So, yeah. So did you venture out into Soho and the central part of England around that time? Yeah, yeah, Hyde Park and, and Soho and, you know, um, I was there for, oh, what's the big street party? Oh, so I've lost my, I've lost my memory now. It's like a, a big, like, um, carnival. I think it's called carnival. Oh, I can't remember. I was there around like Kensington and, and, you know, yeah. I mean, I love, I love London and I like the cold. So. You like the cold? I, um, I like the cold. Oh. Bit, bit weird for a Southern Italian. Isn't that weird? <laughs> um. Man. Yeah, I, so I was like, yes, London's a great idea because it's cold. <laughs> I love the cold. It's I was cold. like, I I like the I like the fashion. I like I like to um, you know, and I like to sort of dress up and wear nice coats and boots and all of that kind of stuff. I think there's a lot of romance in dressing like that. Um, whereas you know, I don't I don't I don't love the heat unless I'm on holidays. Maybe you know, if I'm on the if I'm sitting around in Capri, maybe I'd like to like the oh, heat. But, you know, it's, it's incredible. Who wouldn't? Like, like waking up in waking up daily in a Mediterranean, southern Mediterranean island. There's nothing better, you know, because every day is the same in summer. You know, there's no great. Well, flowers. la dolce vita. That's yeah, right. You know, and uh, that's right. And so you wake up and you just I've I've because I lived there for eight months many years ago. Amazing and. Uh, and I was going. I actually, I actually missed. Well, I was in between Malta and Sicily. Oh, and uh, beautiful. So I was going back and forth, but um, I actually, my cousins owned a fishing trawler, so I was in the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, wow! On the fishing trawler. No, so you try, would have had some pretty nice seafood. <laughs> oh, the seafood was good, but. We used to, they used to bart. So, for instance, uh, they used to bring out, uh, because in the Mediterranean back then, uh, there'd be all different countries in their trawlers. So you'd have Libyans, Greek, Greeks, uh, Italians, uh, uh, Yugoslavian. Uh, what were they back then? Yeah, they were Yugoslavian. Uh, you'd have all Spanish, <laughs> Spanish, Moroccan, uh, Tunisia, and everyone's in that wow. in that area between the uh you know where the how italy goes like the horseshoe so it was all, we're, we're all in where sardinia is basically between sardinia and oh, Sicily, yeah. all that area there's there's boats everywhere from all different countries so for instance the the captain of the ship that i was with um he would bring in crates of johnny walker whiskey and bart with the libyans for gold so they'd give him gold for whiskey because it was illegal you know, the whiskey alcohol. Wow. And so his daughter, who was at three years of age, had got gold rings on each finger, on each toe, and she had, she was, you know, like Elvis used to wear all the gold. She had tripled that amount around her neck. Earrings, she had got, I hadn't seen a, a kid at three years of age with that much gold in my life. You know, it was unbelievable. Wow. So he, he gave me wow. a lot of whiskey. A crate of whiskey used to get a big nugget of gold, you know. Wow, isn't that funny how, I mean, not funny, but it's it's interesting. It's about what people value, you know. Yeah. So 
Um, and I think a, a lot of, I mean, I think that's probably really relevant now, you know, um, what it's pro- probably becoming really evident what, what people value particularly now and what's, what's the most valuable thing for you. Yeah. Um, particularly now that so much has been taken away. Yeah. Um, so I think, yeah, it's, it's an interesting concept to think that, you know, someone would value whiskey more than gold. Yeah. I don't know which category I'd sit in. <laughs> <laughs> like both. I was like, both, both are great. I was like, can I have a little bit from column A and a little bit from column B or do I have to pick? Like, yeah. yeah. The, the, you know, then... I was like, why are you making the choose? Um, yeah. So, you know, when you're doing your cooking classes, are you doing them at your house there? Singing. Yeah, so I'm, yeah. I'm doing I'm doing classes via Zoom. Yeah. Um, so I'm having some singing lessons via Zoom. I'm having um, Italian lessons via Zoom. I'm doing songwriting, some songwriting via Zoom. Um, and I'm going to start some piano keyboard, keyboard lessons via Zoom too. I think I'm, I'm sort of wanting to do things that I've... Um, I've been, it's been on my list for some time. And because I sort of, you know, not sort of, I do, I, I have, a, you know, a day job and, and basically a music job. I'm usually quite busy. Um, so most of the time I don't have uh, a lot of space to, to do things like, you know, learn Italian at the moment or spend some time sitting at the keyboard for a little while or, you know, and it's been it's been an interesting time, but um, but it's I think it's enabled me personally to have a little bit more space um, to really think about what I want to do, and then also really um, you know try and tap into some some skills that I've been wanting to you know learn for a while. Maybe I should put learning technology on that list also. <laughs> like, but you, but, you know, we don't want to pile it on. I've always loved to cook. Um, but my biggest thing is, I mean, I love to cook for others. So I, I guess if it's just for me, I don't, I'm, I, I don't feel like I need to really put a huge amount of effort in because then I'm going to end up making four serves and I'm going to eat more. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> you know, I, I, if I have people to cook for, it's like a real love thing for me and it's really creative and, and um, I've been really putting a lot of effort and time my roommates, I live with two people, are loving it. Um, so, yeah, I made a really nice sort of traditional uh, Italian Good Friday seafood extravaganza. Um, but, no, I, I definitely don't think I would be able to have cooking classes because I don't cook. Um, I cook off the cuff. I don't follow a recipe. Never do with anything. I just, and if I read a recipe, I kind of get a little bit of an idea and I just put a little bit of this and a little bit of that and just, you know, kind of hope for the best um, and go, go by feeling, which is kind of how I run 75% of my life. <laughs> I like, you know, I, I, I like to kind of go by instinct. <laughs> and then if it fucks up, well, we'll just fix it next time. Yeah, that's or we'll it. learn something and not do it again that way. Absolutely. <laughs> so I, I don't think I'd be able to tell someone how to how to kind of cook. I'd just kind of go, I'll oh, just chuck it all in there. And But what's your favourite meal? Yeah. Is, it, is it the ragu, that sort of stuff? or My favourite meal would be what I made on um, Good Friday would be a spaghetti marinara. You like the marinara. Um, but, I, but I like mine with a little bit of um, like Napoli sauce. Yeah. I don't like it in just the um, garlic and, yeah. and uh, white wine kind of. And then I like a, I like a zuppa di cozze, which is a mussel soup. Um, that's my favourite. And then, oh, I mean, oysters and champagne, you can't really go wrong with that. I mean, that's not really cooking. That's just that's indulgent. Of lemon juice. That's, <laughs> that's just taking them out of the tray <laughs> um but yeah I quite like cooking um again it's been an, 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 like a time for me where I'm I'm usually eating you know a, a salad out of a Tupperware container in the car you know from one once you know from my day jobs you know to a to a gig or to a rehearsal or 
you know, or I'm eating some frozen meal at 10 p.m. when I get home, you know, or something out of a, you know, or I'm getting a meal service or sort of things like that because I've been, you know, the last the last few years for me have been pretty crazy busy. Um, I've just been, yeah, really pushing pushing myself and just sort of trying to do way too many things, I think. But, um, but I've really, you know, just wanted to pursue certain avenues. And I think coming from, from where I've come from, um, is, uh, you know, really strong work ethic. And I haven't, um, had much of a break over the last few years. So I'm sort of, in two minds about this lockdown situation. Everyone's like, oh, I just want it to be over. And I, I mean, obviously, you know, everybody wants to get back to work and, you know, I'm, I'm dying to get back on a stage, but I also (laughs) think that there is some beauty, like there is some beauty in, in having a little bit of time, you know, like I don't think you and I would, would have had the time to do this so I'm sort of going, you know, it's nice to be able to do things, even though there's a whole onslaught of terrible things happening. I'm trying to sort of go, oh, okay, well, there's some, you know, it's a, it's a Saturday afternoon and, you know, we're having a chat and that's, that's nice. It. That's it. Um, so, I mean, but, you know, I've been, like everybody else, there's been an onslaught of emotions. So <laughs> I don't know whether you're coming or going sometimes. So, yeah, it's been interesting. When you were performing, uh, you were supporting uh, Eric Robinson. Yeah, we were. He was awesome. <laughs> did you do all the nights? Were you supporting? Were you, did you perform supporting? No, him all the we nights? only we only did three. Um, but I was pretty like nervous because I was like, "Whoa, this guy's worked with you know he's produced and worked with Jill Scott and you know Music Soul Child and." You know, he's a Grammy nominee. Yeah. And then there's little me who's like, <laughs> oh. um, you know, and he really, really knows his stuff. And, you know, a lot of people probably hadn't heard very much about him probably in Australia particularly. But, you know, if you have a list of have a look at his credentials, it was pretty. Impressive. Pretty large yeah. and pretty impressive. And he was just the nicest nicest person and just ha- like so talented I think he'd written didn't he say that he wrote like I don't know 300 albums or something like yeah. he's he, like he write like they have like these challenges where they write like you know album an album a month or something else oh, something along those lines yeah and you can go into his um you know you can sort of subscribe to sort of like so a behind just- the scenes of how he does it and you could yeah. suge- you could suggest um, lyrics, and he will make a song out of a phrase. Like if you give him a phrase, he'll go, okay, "Yeah, I'll make a song out of that." I mean, that's. I mean, he is an incredibly talented person. But oh, uh, so talented! On that Saturday night, I remember. Just... I remember because it, it would have been about twelve months ago, right? This time last year. Yeah. 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 Because uh, I think Salt and Pepper were around, and. Uh, who else was playing? Eminem, I think. Eminem. Eminem was around as well. Yeah. Yeah. And someone else, and I think Bon Jovi was at Eddie Had, or there was someone like that. Anyway, I can't remember who I can't it remember. Was. But there were bon, definitely bon a few jo- people around because it was sort of that time, you know, it's that time in the year where there's, you know, a whole lot of international artists, yeah. you know, visiting. Um, so, yeah. I mean, it sort of happens at particular times in the year. So, yeah, I can't, I can't remember exactly, but there was definitely a few around. But I remember a whole lot of them were congregated around where I was, near the merch desk. <laughs> and, uh, you know, on that Saturday night, man, they, they were putting back a, you know, a lot of shots. I've got to tell you, they were having a lot of fun. Oh, yeah, they're fun, fun times, fun times at Birds. Good. I mean, I've been <laughs> a spectator there and had a ball. You know, <laughs> seen great are... people there. Oh yeah, and I mean, it's it's just kind of that vibe. You know, why not have a few shots? Why not have a yeah. few more? Like yeah. you know, like it's sort of got that. I know, it just got that kind of vibe. I was just trying to point out that uh, by the end of the night, uh, I I got introduced to uh, one of the singers from one of those bands, Eminem or whatever, I don't know, and they knew uh, Avery Sunshine. Do you know Avery Sunshine? 
Yeah. 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 And that's and I said I, I she goes I she spoke about you to say hello, you know. And I said, Oh great, she's lovely, you know, and she goes and he was pretty, you know, he's on his way, he's had a few and he looked at me and they were big <laughs> and, and they were big guys. Did you see how big those guys were? Like, you know, big in muscles and big, you know. And uh, and I found him a little bit intimidated, I must admit. I went and I'm just like, I better get back to where I belong, back in the booth, you know. <laughs> and uh, oh, most of them are, you know, gentle giants. Yeah, I know. But, you know, you know, when you're working but, and, it, and everyone's a bit, yeah, 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 you know, of course, you don't want to sort of overstep. Is that the only time you supported any acts or at birds or are you? Yeah, support? I mean international. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, and sort of with Mayfield, we, we, we had spent so long, um, you know, working on our record, you know, it took us three years, you know, independently funded completely um, to get our album Victim of Circumstance out. So I think for so long there was obviously a lot of focus going into the craft and going into the, the music and we were gigging a lot, playing lots of gigs um, to basically self-finance um, the album who, and that was recorded by Ivan Kajoyan, who also plays in Cooking on Three Burners and The Traffic. Um, so I think after that album was released, we had, well, I mean, I particularly had, um, I probably would say higher hopes for it. And I think that um, going into sort of what I'm doing now I'm, with a solo record that I'm working on, or sort of just started working on, um, I would release it very differently um, just and, and, and do things very differently now. I think that um, perhaps it just wasn't sort of executed the right way. So I think for me, I, it took me a while because I was quite, I was quite crushed that we didn't get, you know, international supports and things like that. Like we sort of kept being just under um, the rate, like, you know, we, we lost the, the support map for the, um, for Rag and Bone Man to the Chesky Brothers, you know, you kind of can't, you, I mean, we couldn't compete with the Chesky Brothers, but it was kind of awesome to sort of, um, sit sort of, sort of under them. And, um, and then actually the Chesky Brothers ended up giving Mayfield free tickets to Rag and Bone Man at 170 Russell, um, you know, so we we sort of come close. Um, you know, we've got a num we, we had a number of emails from Blues Fest. You know, we sort of just missed out on that kind of thing. So we we sort of it was we were sort of there, but it just kind of um, didn't quite hit the mark. And I think um, with the new material that we're releasing and working on at the moment, um, we're hoping to kind of have a little bit more festival sort of exposure. And, and do things a little bit differently this time. So I think it's just, yeah, one of those things that, I mean, I had never, I mean, that, that this has been my first record and, you know, it was my, the first time I've released sort of any, any music. So I think sort of coming, coming at it set the second time around with Mayfield and then also with my solo um, album, I, I know sort of I have a better idea of what to do and what not to do. I mean, but there's a whole bunch of billion other factors, you know, like, Spotify playlists and, you know, do you have the right promoter and, you know, is it the right style for what's, you know, trending? There's a, there's a lot of things, a lot of factors that go into that as well. There are. And it's hard to find your place in the world with that stuff. Well, yeah. I mean, it's just sort of, I mean, the kind of, the kind of music that, I mean, this is why I'm saying I'm like a grandma who still like writes on pieces of paper, the kind of music that is quite popular that a lot of, um, you know, that obviously that is sort of being played on Triple J and, um, you know, at festivals like Meredith and Golden Plains and, you know, Strawberry Fields and all of those kinds of festivals. I, I don't, I don't particularly resonate with a lot of it. Um, so, I find it really difficult to kind of be, I mean, not that I would ever do this, but I find it really difficult to kind of write to that kind of genre. You know, a lot of, a lot of the singing is not really singing. Um, 
it's it's kind of sort of beats and, and and speak singing, which is kind of I don't even know what you call it. It's not as it's not something that I would turn on and listen to. Um, so I guess if I wouldn't listen to it, then there'd be no point in me writing it. You know. So then you kind of go in terms of Mayfield or even the things that I'm doing, I go, well, do I want to start producing music like that so that I can be on a Golden Plains lineup or do I want to continue, you know, do I continue down the path that I'm on and perhaps not get that level of exposure because it's just not the type of music that's trending on Spotify playlists or Triple J or things like that. So it's sort of, um, you know, I mean, for me, I'm all about being authentic. So I think that it's, I was sort of trying to find at the moment, I'm just trying to find something that might, um, work sort of in between those worlds. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's happened to like big singers. Like, does anyone not like that anymore? (laughs) I was like, maybe I'm talking about myself. I was like, I'm listening to the radio and I'm like, everybody's just singing at like one note or talking or rapping or, and I'm like, where, where's all the divas? Where's the divas gone? Hey, where are they? Where's the soul? That's what I want to, that's what I want to know. Bring them back. Maybe I, cause I grew up in an era and, and, you know, maybe I haven't been able to let it go, but I mean, you know, I love, you know, Etta James and, I mean, I mean, not that I sort of grew up listening to her, but, I mean, I, I sort of grew up listening to Tina Arena and Mariah and Whitney and, you know, all these amazing vocalists and then, you know, I mean, Aretha Franklin's a huge, obviously a huge influence of mine. You know, I'm a massive Tina Turner fan. I love Shaka Khan. Shaka Khan is amazing. Oh, Shaka Khan's just like, but but what what I don't really get is why music, why are vocalists like, you know, not that not that I'm saying I sound like Shaka Khan. My God, I wish, but you know, I mean, people who have that kind of vibe, why is music like that not trending in, in on Triple J or on, you know, why are they not headlining? big festivals like like I'm I'm just not quite sure and I'm not quite sure whether or not it's like you know maybe 21 year olds are not interested in hearing vocals like that I think you know I don't know I've I've got no idea I I think that I think I can shed some light on that for you how me I think teach uh, me the wisdom I think uh see in Australia because if we were living in America Mm. you'd be seeing those type of singers all over the place oh yeah Oh, you know, yeah, you can work, walk down to your local bar and see them. Everywhere. Everywhere. The, the talent is everywhere. Yes. And, yes. and they're singing and they're singing and they're playing their instruments and they can adapt to electronics, to whatever it is. They're very yeah. versatile and they have a, quite an eclectic type of uh, uh, culture to, to draw upon from those influences. Whereas in yeah. Australia, you know, I don't want to sound weird about this, but and someone can cor- correct me if I'm incorrect. No, go but, for it. But this is this, so this, is, a, this, this is a free this, conversation. This is uh, chat. this is uh, Australia is more well was a rock, you know, a rock type of uh, genre. Oh, that's true. They, they really it was a rock genre. I mean, when I was growing up, ACDC, the Angels, you know, and the list kept going and not, you know, whoever it was. But every state of Australia had their rock bands. And mm. um, so it was all that type of music. Now, if you if you were on the outskirts of that those genres, especially around that time, if you were playing reggae or you were playing, you, you had no chance of breaking in because... And, yeah, and that's you, true. You know, but that was then because even then... You didn't have computers and stuff, but now with the computers and internet and Spotify and you and whatever all the other stuff, yeah, the digital yeah. age, uh, you can promote yourself to America, wherever you can promote yourself to anywhere in the world. But it just it, it just depends on, you know, if you just say, look, well, if I don't have a market in Australia, it doesn't mean I don't have to have a market in America or wherever it is. And I think it's just so like. If you extend your yeah, that's exactly if, right. If you extend your networks to Eric Robinson's people, 
and they play on your record and you start getting into their world and you write better material and they and they can actually perform some of the material yeah. for you, you know, then you start to yeah. sort of see and develop your music a bit, you know, and it's... Well, that's, that's what we were sort of... I was talking about with some of the boys, you know, uh, and we're sort of having a bit of a chat about collaborating on some things. Um, and that's terrifying. <laughs> I was like, whoa. Um, <laughs> I was like, ah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you know, these are these are big time kind of kind yeah, of players that's all, and, and that's, all that, cool. that, that's that's a very sort of nerve-wracking nerve kind of scenario to put yourself into when I am already quite nervous at, uh, I mean, personally sort of working on a solo record record away from Mayfield, which is, you know, will be the debut release for me um, away from the band. So it's like, it's, it's a bit scary. Um, but that's, that's I okay. mean, I'm kind of... Like it's a bit like what am I actually doing? And because I'm so used to working in a group sort of scenario, I mean, we're such a, a tight-knit band. We're all very good friends. With The band's been running for seven years, um, you know, granted with different outfits. But, you know, it's, I mean, it's it's the unit is quite solid and, and um, yeah, so it's sort of, it's for me personally, it's quite quite terrifying. But I have been extending my, my network's you know, out to, you know, those guys. And um, and that's what, I mean, is amazing about technology. You know, you can write music and collaborate with people all over the world, which is phenomenal. And, um, you know, we've never been exactly what you were saying. We've never been in a situation where that's more accessible. So, um, yeah, it's, 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 it's sort of this, uh, I'm in this kind of like, oh, God, I'm freaking out. This is, I'm too scared. And then I'm also really excited. So Yeah. I mean, but you, I so, mean, you know, you, you only live once, man. So you just got to just take a bottle yes. of wines and, and make sure you got that fan on yeah. you and, and that's it, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Where's my exactly. fan? I need my fan. Where's my fan? What was that? Your fan. You your know, fan? When you're, when you're. When you're uh, oh, my fan from the stage? Yeah. Because I um, am. Everyone always. Everyone always talks about that fan. Everyone, <laughs> everyone, every, everyone I talk to. But then, when I play gigs and it's hot, I've got the drummer behind me going, "Yeah, this is great." <laughs> you know. Or I, oh, I, I get the guitar. You know, I get the guitarist kind of coming over to me. I'm like, "Oh, you're getting." Yeah, this is before social distancing was a thing. Yeah, they're like, "Oh, it's hot." I was like, "Oh, you like my fan now? You like it?" Um. Oh, it's just. You know, I mean, I, I do a lot of a lot of covers work, um, also as well as original music, and um, that's probably where I kind of really cut my teeth when I first started was sort of throwing myself into the deep end with with really great established musicians who uh, you know had been doing this a lot longer than I have, and I learnt very quickly and. Uh, you know, and then I started bringing the fan along, and then it became a little bit of a topic of conversation. But yeah, the fan, the fan is in the garage now. It hasn't seen a stage so for what, a while. What, what, what was um, what was Prince's guitar player's name? He came out with Paul Peterson. What was his name? Oh, I can't remember. Uh, he, was, he was an amazing guitar player. Anyway, I can't remember his name, but he, he actually was Prince's main guitar. Did he play player. birds? Yeah, he played at Birds. That's I worked with him. That's what I'm trying to explain. Because he wrote on oh. his, he wrote on his writer, "I need a fan." So I gave him one. <laughs> I, I gave him one of those really pissy fans that I had. You know those. Like really, one of those little shiny ones. That, that's all I had, and I thought, well, that is, that's a fan, you know. And he's like, should have gave me a call. <laughs> should have given me a call. I've got I've got I've got two of them in the garage. You could borrow one. <laughs> and anyway, so so. He's freaking out, man. He's going, you've got, you got to get me a fan. I'm going, I gave you a fan. He goes, I can't feel it. I need the fan. <laughs> I'm going, he wants a fucking industrial fucking fan, you know, one of those big things, you know. <laughs> I feel it. I, I know it. That's, I'm the same. I can't handle it. <laughs> See? Not to 
just me. It's yeah. not just me. I, wonder, I can't remember I mean, he, he wanted it to yeah. sort of shake his shirt while he's playing, you know, and put the hair back, you know, the whole bit, you know. Oh, it's just all like a, you know, it's a bum. But, you know, there's nothing worse than being uncomfortable, you know, on on – on on a stage oh that's hilarious I can't feel it you know people have done that with me too when I've done things and I've you know put on the rider and I'm like that's and I always have mine with me all the time because yeah. I'm like that's not going to cut it yeah <laughs> your, your fans good your you, you know you got an industrial uh level me yeah your fans oh, industrial. No, it's just from Kmart yeah, it's but, just from Kmart but I mean, it's you know, it's not too bad. It's great. It does the job. It does the job. People, people think I'm trying to be Beyonce. I'm like, no, I'm just hot. Um, I just get hot, and plus, you know, if you're going to spend time and effort doing your hair and makeup, you might as well keep yourself looking relatively decent. That's right. <laughs> when, yeah. I mean, because I'm I'm one of those. Pref- I'm quite. You know, I'd, I'd like to get into it. I jump around. You know, I'm in a funk band, soul band. So, yeah, you know, that's it. I like to kind of move around. Absolutely. Depends on kind of what you're doing. I guess, yeah. But I like to jump into it, get into it. And so, I, want, I wanted to, yeah. I wanted to uh, just say that I want to thank you for um, performing at my brother's uh, benefit show last year. Ah, uh, that's, oh, I'm so sorry about that. That was a really special thing to be a part of. Oh, great. And, uh, Thank you. No, I appreciate you're it. You're so welcome. And, you're uh, so welcome. I just got the uh, CD today. So uh, did, you oh. end up, did you end up having a listen to the mix that I did for you for that? I you, didn't. You Don't didn't. kill me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't kill me. <laughs> Sorry, it's, it's been one of those things on the back burner. I don't even know how well we even sounded. Yeah, you did sound, we even sound, sound all right? Yeah, you sounded good. You sounded good. I mean, because the st- the sound was amazing. Yeah, like it was really really good, and it yeah. was really fun. Yeah, um, we had a really really good time. Yeah, and because I think we we hadn't played a gig for a couple of months actually, and we 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 really enjoyed ourselves. But um, no, that was a good night. It was very special to be a part of something like that. I mean, and that's that's what it's all about, really giving back where you can. Um, you know be nice if I don't want to get political but it would be nice if the government would recognize a lot of musicians and creatives who do do that yeah but, uh, totally. that's what I'll that's what I'll say about that topic <laughs> um <laughs> and then we'll end it there but yeah I'm uh, no but th- thanks for inviting us to do it it was very special oh that's my pleasure thank you for doing it but um that's all right so you got the Mayfield you you, you got the Mayfield uh name from Curtis Mayfield right Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. When did you when when did you know about Curtis Mayfield? At what age did you come across his music? My my dad um, was a huge music influence of of mine. He is a musician. He he sings and plays guitar. So I grew up listening to you know Al Green, uh, Stevie Wonder, Curtis Mayfield. Um, you know, uh, I mean Marvin Gaye. Um, so I, I grew up listening to all those, you know, iconic artists, um, you know, pa- and then, you know, Patti LaBelle. Um, so I, yeah, I, I sort of have been listening to him f- for years, you know, Bill Withers, um, lo- a lot of blues. I also grew up listening to a lot of rock. Um, my brother is a, is a drummer. Um, so then I sort of, you know, was always exposed to sort of Pink Floyd, Led Zeppelin, um, all of that yep. kind of rock. And my mum is a is a singer, so you know she she loved all of her sort of. You know, Bar- she's Barbara a mezzo Streisand. soprano, classical singer, and um, but also sort she- of, I, I was exposed to lots of different kinds of music. But uh, when Mayfield started, um, we were just a cover band. We kind of just had a had a bit of a jam and and you know I was absolutely terrified because <laughs> I I've never been, never been able to call a band before and and never really sort of worked in that capacity and um so then we started writing songs and then we were like well we need it we need a band name and it was um and we were covering Curtis Mayfield so we just kind of just I don't know, we just kind of called it that and we just didn't really know we were like oh we'll just run with it it'll be like a you know, put like n- name in the interim, and then it just kind of stuck. It's a great name. Yeah, it's a great. I mean, I've a great been a, name. I've been a Curtis Mayfield fan since I was 
about 15, when I was about 15, I came across his album. And, yeah. Uh, and, uh, man, when I heard when I heard Pusher Man, I was just like, what, yeah. a, what a song that is. You know, I listened to the yeah. rhythm of that song. And, oh, that's awesome. And there's another album called New World Order, which I don't know if you know that album, but uh, Aretha Franklin actually sings on that album. And, oh, wow. Um, you got to listen I've got, to that. I've actually got a bunch of vinyl that I've just pinched from my dad's place, yeah. so maybe there's going to be something in there that I can yeah. have a bit of a listen to with it. With a glass of wine on this fine afternoon. Okay, so I reckon uh, we should wind it up now. All right. Well. I'll take care. Thank you very much. No uh, worries. Thanks for having me. I'm going to chat soon. Thank you very much. Voodoo strikes. It will tear apart your head when voodoo strikes. You wish that you was dead when voodoo strikes. It will tear apart your head.